Alan Stratton from Eswood Turns. In the last couple of videos I've explored herringbone glue-ups for ornaments and other projects, this being at uh, right angles, and I decided to make another one which has three intersecting uh, boards and glue up. I made it a little bit bigger so it's, this is not a hanging ornament, this is more of a stationary ornament. Uh, I like to thought why not try a round bottom but then that requires that I have a base to put it on but it has a nice look and the finial uh, just kind of complements the other view but the other thing that is different here is that I used a threaded insert on this this happens to be 3d printed and uh, so and it's a triple start insert so that you can start at three different places which uh, means that one, two out of three don't have a grain match, but still there's one that will have a grain match. But it sh screws on uh, much more quickly and tightly and much don't have to find the point uh, that may be 350 degrees away from where you are. So uh, if you look back on my channel here, you will find videos on with a jig to cut threads. That's good for some projects. You'll find uh, hand chasing. Uh, especially with uh, segmented rings, which in effect created a wood insert similar to this that is 3D printed. Uh, but they're all valid techniques that can be used different ways. The advantage of this one is that it, I can actually make a triple start very easily. Uh, I'm considering whether they should be available to the general public, so let me know if you think that there might be a market for that. So let me know. And uh, meanwhile, let's go ahead and make this herringbone box ornament. For this build, I am using five different species, wenge, yellow heart, paduk, cherry, and maple. This is a similar gluing process to the previous ones, except, well, first three slices forming sort of a pyramid before the next full layer. No layer mates to another of its own species. The slices are two and a half by two and a half by a quarter. Again, glue with a slight overlap. Let dry, sand, then go on to the next layer. One thing I have to be careful of is which layer goes next. I gang sawed them and kept the stack in order during the glue up. I also have to be aware which surface to glue next. It is hard to describe, but you'll know the problem when you try this. It takes a long time to build up into a complete block. Since my slices are too large for a typical hanging ornament, I will use this laminated block to make a decorative box. At the bandsaw, I cut off the end where the block is solid. Now I have mounted the block between centers and start rounding it off with my bowl gouge. I find that the wood is not quite centered since the block is more round on one side than another. I tried to adjust the drive center to compensate. These woods are hard and chippy and with wild grain orientation. I find that I must be careful which direction to cut to avoid chipping off chunks. Downhill works, but still pretty much more gently than usual. After cutting back the cylinder portion, I also work down the peak, then cut a shallow tenon. I like the deep shark jaws that I typically use since they will accept the peak without cutting it back. Now mounted into a chuck, I cut a tenon on the opposite end before parting the cylinder into two sections. As the cut approaches center, I move the tailstock away in case I cut through the wood. In that case, I do not want the wood to bind between centers. That could be bad news. It is a good thing that I did this because the wood did break away at about a half inch diameter. One piece did bounce on the floor, but no damage. Next, I took a very light cut to true the end, then decided to hollow with a forstrom bit, given the varying wood consistency. But I cannot hollow completely with the drill. I need to pull out my box scraper to enlarge the hole. First, I enlarge the hole, but more shallow to fit the thread set. As usual, there is a lot of testing, 
especially when fitting a mortise to, in effect, a tenon, especially a tenon that I cannot tool. The opposite direction is much easier, fitting a tenon to a mortise. After the thread set is fitted, I enlarge the hollow a little more with a round nose scraper. I am also ensuring I have an expansion mount inside this top portion. Now to reverse the mount for an expansion mount into the top portion. With my bow gouge, I can shape the exterior to taste while removing that temporary mount tenon. I will not sand this now in case I need to match it better to the bottom. Switching now to the bottom portion, it is mounted on that tenon I cut much earlier. With this mount, I can drill for an initial hollow with a Forstner bit, then proceed to fit the thread set to a mortise here mostly with my box scraper, then hollow it some more to match the inside of the thread set. I have checked the top with the bottom to ensure that they flow well together. I have also sanded the interior. Now I am wrapping the outside with masking tape and folding it in over the mortise for the thread set. Then I am applying an unscented wax. I do not want wax where I will need to glue. I like unscented wax for an interior finish since it will not smell. I am reversing the bottom now onto the chuck in an expansion mount. Here again, the deep jaws are handy since they are taller than the depth of the box. Then with my spindle gouge and scraper, I'm shaping the bottom into a spherical shape solely by eye. After a thorough sanding, I can apply shellac friction polish and give it a good rub down at high speed on the lathe. Since I have checked for flow between the top and the bottom, I can sand and apply shellac friction polish on the top and rub it down on the lathe. I had hoped to use the bottom offcut from the glue block for a base but I did not have enough solid wood at the cut line. Instead, I have selected a piece of plum burl for a simple base. The wood is pressed between the live center and a wood faceplate while I round it off and cut a tenon. I had to reduce the wood quite a bit to get through the bark edge into wood complete enough for a tenon. The wood figure is very nice.
Now that I can hold it securely to the lathe, I can shape the bottom. I want a simple shape, but the wood must be light and hollow to receive the ornament box. I decide to drill this gnarly wood since the jaws are very close. I also have to cut a shallow mortise in the bottom. Now I can sand and finish the bottom side with shellac friction polish. Finally, I can reverse the mount yet again to work on the top side. This is complicated for the natural edge. Unfortunately, I have to remove most of the natural edge. After sanding, apply shellac friction polish to the underside. I like the shellac for this type of project since I can finish as I go through the project. Previously, I used epoxy to glue the male part of the thread set to the top. Now I need to do the same for the matching part of the thread set. I have mixed equal parts of 30 minute epoxy in a discardable plastic cup. Then spread just a little epoxy onto the bottom corner of the mortise. I do not want squeeze out at the top since that would glue the two parts together. I have marked the grain match with masking tape. With that marking, I only need to put the parts together and twist into alignment, then set aside to cure. Finally, a finial. I am using the same plum burl as the base. My wife recommended that I not use yet another species of wood for the finial. I am just a little worried about wild grain in the burl wood. I have decided the design will mimic the shape of my ornamental box rather than to introduce another profile. With sharper curves, this will be a spindle gouge project. I am using my sharpened end wrenches to cut the tenon, working from 5 8 to 3 8 However, the wrenches, due to their nature, are slightly oversized. I have to trim the tenon just a little more with my skew. I finished this also with shellac friction polish. With this being more of a festive box, I think it will look best with a good shine. I am giving it a good buff with Tripoli White Diamond and Carnauba Wax. This project is an advanced herringbone project. I like it. No leftovers from this project. It will not hang from a Christmas tree, but I do consider it an ornamental project. I invite each of you to send in your favorite ornament pictures for the Ornament Challenge before November 30. It does not have to be complex, they can be very simple. Meanwhile, explore the great ornaments already submitted. They are great ornaments from simple to complex. Just check them out. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield for safety anytime the lathe is running. I will see you next week with another wood turning video. Be wise in these COVID times and stay healthy.